I'm sure eventually more people will drop in. Welcome back to your Liberty Radio on a Friday night, ladies and gentlemen. It is time for us to fulfill our civic duty and find out what is on your mind. Uh, Today, before we get started, today is July 19th, 2024, for those keeping score at home. And of course, Open Lines is your chance to be a part of Liberty Radio. Call in and let us know what is on your mind tonight. The call-in link, as always, is in the Telegram channels for Liberty Radio, as well as the new prisoners. It's right there. You click the link. You follow the instructions. It's real easy. Right, Rob? And, yes, uh, relatively yeah. easy. Yeah. Living proof right there, ladies and gentlemen. Caught live on tape. As always, you do not have to turn on your camera if uh, you find yourself in a compromising position or you are otherwise shy. But, uh, and I can't believe I actually have to remind people about this every single week, but you know how they have, they have the, the caution hot warning on the McDonald's coffee cup, right? That's there for a reason. And the lawyers say that I still have to tell people that you will have to turn on your microphone. It it seems like it'd be common sense to me by now, but apparently not. I don't know. I don't know, Rob. Well, does that technology be playing tricks on people these days? Um, CrowdStrike knocked out with like a (laughs) third of the internet or something like that today. Right. Knocked out travel. yeah, allegedly, allegedly. And I'm actually, I'm glad that, that you're here right now on this day and, and we're doing Friday night open lines because as an IT professional, we get to get, you know, your unfettered take on what the fuck exactly went down. So essentially, um, CrowdStrike is a network intrusion software package that's basically run by, I'm sh- I don't know enough about it to really speak too intelligently on it, but my understanding is it's a uh, advanced antivirus malware protection thing that runs on your network. Like the place I work uses something much cheaper and uh, it causes enough problems of its own, but oh, I'm sure to, to have an update get sent out that would uh, make all of your servers go into a panic mode and crash is that's like absurd because every, every like whether you're doing it internally in a company, you're doing testing on a you know dev development environment, test environment, and you're doing it multiple times to make sure that something like that doesn't happen. So to think that they could push that out like that and blow up everybody because most places will stagger their development test environment and their production environment with when they run the patches or roll it out. But something like that, that's so intrusive in your network, it's going to probably always be one of those auto update things that you can't stop it from updating. And it's just a, uh, another way to put a payload on somebody's network. But they they did that with Solar Winds, which is a monitoring software that a little large group of people in government and uh, private sector run to monitor like up down on servers and different things that run on them. And that was compromised a couple of years ago, where some package they sent out was basically like what the Promise software used to be, where it gave uh, backdoor access to all your data. On, on people's networks. Oh, that's nice. And, yeah, Just my company. Yeah, my company used SolarWinds, but we weren't. It was like I think it was two versions ahead of where we were at, so we weren't affected by it. But yeah, it's a big panic when you find something out like that. Well, I bet. But thankfully for my company, um, only way we were affected was outside third-party vendors that we use for you know services here and there but the bulk of our day-to-day is all internal stuff 
Well, I and actually we got a, a phone call from none other than the DJ Hyona this morning. I don't know, like maybe 9 30, 10 o'clock, something like that. And he was like, dude, you're not going to believe this. Like, I can't get gas anywhere. I can't go to the bank. None of the supermarkets, all, like all the supermarkets have signs up on their doors that say cash only. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been, I've been reading about it on the internet for the last couple hours. Like, whole internet's talking about it, apparently. Yeah, but they want to give you a digital ID and track you with some type of digital currency. So, yeah, I can just imagine. That's been, like, the, the push for industry in, in IT is to, like, not operate your own data center and push everything into either Microsoft or Amazon or Google's cloud environment, which oh yeah, a cloud environment is just somebody else's data center that you're not managing. Yeah, and, it's somebody else's silo. And they, you know, they get people to move their stuff, thinking that they're going to cut their costs and all the things that you have to do to get it to run. And then you have stuff like today before CrowdSource or CrowdStrike caused their outage. The Microsoft Azure cloud was having some problem. Might have been related hmm. to that, though. Could have been. But you're pretty much helpless. Yeah. Well, especially if it's something in the boot registry, right? Yeah. Because like that, that's how I understood it, is it was corrupted code in the boot registry, and it was basically just call, causing failure loops, where like the systems would try to boot up, they'd get to a point, it would shut everything down, and then they'd just repeat that process over and over and over. Well, I mean, that's the, the way that works is the update went in and it caused the server to crash. And then the crash turned it into a booting loop where it would just boot up into what's called safe mode or it'll boot up with the frowny face telling you something is going wrong. Right. Please restore your system. Yeah, that's uh, one of my buddies that I used to work with. He uh, had like 300 systems today that all came up like that. <laughs> oh, my. That must have been a lot of fun. Yeah, I can imagine. Where I work, we have like 5,000 Windows servers. So it would have been, let's say I'd still be on the phone with people right now, keeping track of everything. <laughs> well, I did see that CrowdStrike's uh, stock had uh, tanked about 20%. As of about midday, I don't know if they were ever able to recover any of that or not, but I'm guessing probably not. I, has it even been fixed yet? Oh, they supposedly had a fix right away, but I mean, I, I don't really? know. Right away. Right away. How but convenient. The, you, you can't fix that like on a mass scale of a system that won't boot up. I mean, you have to take each individual system and do some type of remediation to get it to boot up. And my understanding was they had to uninstall CrowdStrike off of the server and then boot it up um, without it on there and then re-download their new package. So who knows what the fuck's in the new package? Um, right. Who knows what the, uh, the vulnerability is of taking it off of your systems? Well, that, that was kind of what i was thinking about all day is like but that, this that, creates an opportunity right but if you if, if you if you have people who've already accessed your internal network your shit is going to get compromised either way so right um, that's, they, they have firewalls and all kinds of things that are supposed to you know keep your server safe from being attacked in that way so not having that software on there for you know 10 minutes shouldn't be any problem unless your whole network's already compromised. Which they all are with, you know, the root tools that <laughs> was it the uh WikiLeaks told everybody about? Yeah. Yeah. Was it Vault Vault 8 or something like that? Something like that. Yeah, all the NSA's hacking tools released out for everybody. Well I mean I'm <clears throat> I'm still of the opinion that uh the like the defense department intelligence agencies they can access whatever they want they built oh, yeah. the shit 
They built the internet. I don't know if people have generally been able to wrap their heads around the idea that the internet was created by the U.S. military. They're not going to lock themselves out of their own creation. They can get whatever they want whenever they want. What are you talking about? It was called ARPA back then. It wasn't DARPA. <laughs> they were working for you back then. Oh, uh, yeah. ARPA, the original space agency. Yeah, sure. Well, I mean, I, I think the uh, elephant in the room is this clown show that we've spectacle we witnessed the last week with um, dude getting his ear shot off, but not really. Nobody can actually see the hole in his ear because right. that should be some national secret. Like I, I don't know. I've never seen anybody get shot in the ear from 130 yards away. If that's you know the guy who actually shot him, but. Wouldn't your ear kind of like blow the fuck up a little bit? You would think it would swell a little bit. Now, the ear yeah. is mostly cartilage, which does well, not carry a whole lot of... Um, not a lot of blood uh, in there. Right, right. But but at the same time, wouldn't it have exploded the cartilage? I mean, it depends on the bullet type, I To would an extent, to an extent, right. But then again, he's, he's wearing the, the fucking uh, maxi pad on the side of his head. So you can't really get a good look at it anymore. You know, along with all of his little fucking Renfields at the, at the big boy party, they were all wearing the, the maxi pad on the side of their head too, in solidarity. That was cute. I know. That was really That's, cute. Well, it was not as cute as when, you know, the Hulkster came out and, uh, started, you know, talking about the Trump of, Trump a maniac. So now, wait a minute, like, Rob. Wait, wait just a damn minute. Are you was, are you trying to tell me that growing up in the 1980s, you you were not taking your vitamins and saying your prayers? <laughs> uh, what was the other thing? No, but I thought it was very odd that other people were, <laughs> and that was my early impression, like my late teens, early 20s of what politics was, was just pro wrestling. And oh shit, if it didn't all come full circle on me at 52, yeah. watch, watching these fucking clowns. Like is, is the macho man showing up at the DNC to give a rebuttal? Unfortunately not. He, uh, he passed about 15 years ago. Yeah. Yeah, I, I know I it's heartbreaking. A- it is hard, was... but he's in a better place now. So, you <laughs> know, him, him and Miss Elizabeth are finally uh, together again in the great beyond and living happily ever after as they always should have. I, I have like all kinds of um, unanswered questions, but this seems like one of those uh, Carl Rove, Mr. Turd Blossom kind of things where while you're diligently trying to figure out what we just fucking pulled off in front of you, we're off doing other shit and uh, you're just going to sit here and analyze this bullshit and never come to a conclusion of what really happened. Yeah, that's basically what I've been saying since the beginning of the week. This is just meant to make people chase their tails endlessly. Yeah. Which I mean, is why I've been trying to avoid it as much as possible. Is it to try to show how against the deep state Trump is? Because I tell you what, if the CIA is going to kill you, they're going to triangulate you and your head's going to be in pieces. They're not going to have one, you know, there's not going to be a turn of the head that's going to allow like the whole thing to be, (laughs) you know, avoided. Yeah. Or, or they're, they're going to make your helicopter crash, right? Or your, or your small private jet or whatever. Yeah, they have a million, like like Chuck Schumer said out loud, they got a million ways to Sunday to get back at you. That's right. Like somebody somebody should have taken that statement with a little more <laughs> credibility when he said it. Because what the fuck? Why would the intelligence agency be able to take out an active president or candidate or this or that, senator, congressman, name it? Are, are you Fucking saying that this local, is unprecedented in U.S. history? The is that what you're saying, lo- Rob? Yeah, like the local guy at the gas station with the turban on his head that doesn't speak English. Like I, I, I don't think they should be able to take anybody out. But here we are, watching this clown show, and then the Hulkster comes out and tells me to, you know, basically eat my vitamins. And 
I'm like, listen to the crowd cheer as if it was like a sixth grade birthday party. Dude, it yeah, was really... Thursday night main event. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> Thursday night raw. That's right. As the raw part is when they bench you over and didn't use a rubber or any kind of lube. Because I just a clown show. Listen to that dummy like ramble on for like ninety minutes. I, I missed I missed a whole lot of it and just kind of heard it because it was on in the room. <laughs> I only and saw I, clips. That was it. I saw the Hulkster on a clip. I didn't see that as part of it last night. I saw that today, and I was just like, my jaw was like hanging. I'm like, wow, they've really gone lower. It's like, can we get dumber? Yeah. yeah, yeah, we can get dumber. Well, it's like I said in, in the show announcement. It seems like we're just reliving like parts of, of movies that we've seen over the course of the last 25 years or so. Like, that's how hard up they are for new material. They're like, what are we going to do next? Uh, have we done Vantage Point yet? No, let's mm-hmm. do that. I, I guess it's going to be, um, I thought, like, the entertainment world had a better imagination. But when you find out that the guy who was running the Motion Picture Association of America for many, many years was a CIA asset. Most likely. Most likely the, the shooter on the grassy knoll. Yeah. yeah. My, my, most likely the guy who took the shot yeah. on the grassy knoll. One of them. Yeah, that's uh, interesting stuff. I would definitely recommend Corey Hughes' book to anybody. Oh, you read this book? Type of thing. I'm not finished yet. I'm probably about 200 pages in. I think it's like 350. Oh, wow. All right. So you're about halfway through. Yeah, a warning from history. That's what it's called. I'm actually on page 200. I am. So it sounds like you're enjoying it. Yeah, it's one of those books that uh, you want to get back to and read more of. Because it's definitely got a lot of interesting facts. And it's not, it's one of those like subjects I never really uh, cared too much about. But it's good to uh, find out what happens in history. It just keeps repeating itself. Over and over again. It's mm-hmm. interesting. It, it really is. Who was it I was listening to? I think it was. Oh, yeah. It was. Um, I was listening to uh, Geopolitics and Empire. The, I think it's the latest episode. Uh, her voye interviews a guy by the name of Dr. Allen. And Dr. Allen was presenting a, uh, an alternate timeline for history where the Nazis didn't actually lose World War II. They just kind of, uh, they divided up and went to different parts. Of, similar to what the, the five Rothschild brothers did. They kind of split up and went to different areas and, you know, kind of infiltrated the scene there and took that's, over. It's exactly what I've come to understand from reading history. You find out who funded the people and you find out where they all went. Old Operation Paperclip. Yeah. It's, uh, it's amazing. The whole Mossad was trained by, you know, an SS leader who <clears throat> then went on to become the supreme commander for NATO. Yeah, it's a really twisted, sick fucking web. Um, the, the, I, I read the, like the initial story how they were trying to uh, make sure that these weren't Nazis. They were just, you know, they had it. They were trying to pretend like these people just had to join the Nazi party, you know, to stay alive right. and keep doing things right it was just something you had to do at the time it didn't mean anything didn't mean anything just like today being a republican or a democrat it doesn't mean anything uh if you've ever seen john loftus and uh the stuff that he's exposed from having access to all the damn files it's uh crazy i never do anything about it 
they took a couple prison guards back. I remember when I was my teens, probably maybe my early twenties, they found, you know, a couple prison guards from the different places that the Nazis had their prison camps. And, uh, those people got put on trial in a big show, war crimes, this, that. It's like, well, the people who actually were in charge and set the conditions to even give these people any type of authority, <laughs> they were all in Argentina and America and Europe. There's a, uh, a good Operation Gladio and Unholy Alliance with the CIA and the Vatican and organized crime. Hmm. I can't remember who wrote it. I listened to that recently on, on an audio book. And it's crazy how the whole Gladio thing happened and how they uh, shuffled all those Nazis through the Vatican. Yep. The, uh, the rat lines, as they called it. Yep. And got them all to safety, whether it be South America or, or you know, somewhere in Africa. But yeah it's a twisted evil sick web if you look into it enough and it's very well documented it's not like it's some paranoid delusional thoughts it's like yeah they say that history is written by the victors well when you read the stories they're written by the people who actually lived at that time <laughs> well and isn't like that, it's totally isn't different that interesting history. too though because because think about this uh alan dulles when he was working for Sullivan and Cromwell was doing all sorts of business over in Germany for the third Reich. Like that's, that's what he was getting paid to do. And you can still today go and find those records. They are still available. So that is apparently how much they thought of Alan Dulles. They were just like, this motherfucker's going to hang as far as history is concerned. Yeah, that's what everybody would have thought, but he was the one who was getting the high-ranking Nazis, you know, moved out of suspicion. They sacrificed a couple of them, but... Yeah, but what I'm saying is they didn't erase any of that. That's all available for people to find. Yeah, the um, the Devil's Chessboard has a uh, very good expose on Alan Dulles and the evil that he was. Oh my God, dude. He was... I don't know if like it was, it was, that's the question about these type of people, right? Cause you know, there's even just from talking to their family members, their family members will tell you there's always been something off about this person. Right. And that's like one yep. of that's, that's one of the main indicators uh, generally of sociopathy is the, the well, family yeah. picks up on it and just kind of, you know, they excuse it because that's a you know, family member, right? His, one of his sisters had a story um, in, in that book about how his one sister was like in the, in the lake that they always would hang out in the summers and was drowning. And Alan was a, uh, like a championship high school swimmer at the time. And he was just standing there watching his sister drown until like his other sister started screaming and his mom got alerted and then he like jumped in and saved her. But he was yeah. just kind of just fucking that's yeah. He was yeah. just standing there watching her. It's a pretty damning story coming from your sister. Yeah. Well, there was also, uh, what was it? His son, uh, trying to remember. Did, did he give his son a lobotomy? No, I think it may have been one of his, um, you know what? I think this. I think one of his sons was born like mentally retarded, and maybe he did get a lobotomy. But. It was something like that, yeah. Or like he went off to war and and came back damaged mentally, and they tried to give him a lobotomy or something like it's it's some wild like he did some crazy experimental shit on his on own his, children. Yeah, on his own son. Like yeah, it, I forget it that a exact story. Kind of fucking psychopath to do that kind of shit. And just imagine uh, after they picked up where the OSS left off, and then started being the ones trafficking all the opium and heroin in the world, 
and the cocaine. More money than any other government ever had to do whatever evil shit underground. Can't even imagine. I do know they have pieces of hardware in every piece of hardware that they most likely use to compromise whatever device it is. Mm-hmm. Whether it be network routers or system boards. So run Linux if you think that's going to save you, because it ain't. <laughs> no, it ain't. Because <clears throat> again, to the best of my understanding, everything has a backdoor. Yeah. Everything. Unless you're unless you're building and and coding your own stuff yourself, if you're if you're purchasing anything or acquiring it from some somewhere else, it's probably got a back door in it. Yeah, most likely. <clears throat> I wouldn't uh, think anything you do on these digital devices is going to be a secret for anybody. No, no. I figured that out a while ago, though. Like, I figured that out when I was still working for Verizon. I figured that out as soon as things started getting connected to a central source. It's mm-hmm. like... Back like, in the... Uh, wait a minute. Why do they want to put people's appliances on the internet? Oh. they got everything on there now. People's freaking refrigerators and... They're smart meters that they can remotely set how cool you get to keep your house in the, in the summertime. You mean the utility company gets to set it? Because that's that's know. what the smart meters are for. It wasn't so people could like program in whatever their perfect level of comfort was. It was so that they could remotely tap in and be like, no, nah, you're using too much energy. We're going to cut your air back. They, uh... They sold it <laughs> as, uh, what was it? The modernization of the meters. And okay. now they won't have to send out the guy who has to check your meter every couple months. That's right. They can do it remotely now. It's safe and effective. Safe and effective. I don't know. I haven't noticed a difference. My, <clears throat> my thermostat is just a battery operated connected to the, the system. There's no uh, intermediary. <clears throat> Nobody's going to change the thermostat. I mean, granted, I could turn my power off and then I don't have shit, but I think they will exercise that option too. I think that that is uh, in the arsenal and probably ah. coming at some point. I was actually, I was a little bit concerned when I woke up and started looking at the headlines this morning and I was like, you know what? If they were to pull some shit like that, it would be on a Friday, you know, or it would be on a Saturday morning. It would, you know, it would be like a time that you would least expect it. And it's going to take that much longer for it to get fixed because uh, it's on a weekend. I don't know. They mobilize people pretty quick, depending on the size of your environment. It's it, This is like totally different than if, say, like... Uh, some malware that was encrypting people's files got out. Now that would be a fucking nightmare. Unlike you'd ever seen if it was on that kind of scale. Yeah. The whole global system would grind to some kind of slowdown. But in this case, I I've already gotten text messages from work that external vendors that we use have already recovered all their services. Well, that's good. Yeah. I mean, that's what your disaster recovery is all about supposed to be yeah and that's that that is how it's supposed to work i mean i'm pretty sure we could swing everything live in like 24 hours at least but who knows i'm uh hoping not to have one of those horrible events <laughs> I don't know. It, it, it had me thinking a lot today about, you know, just like what, what if this was the, the death blow, right? The, the thing to cripple all systems to bring in the, the actual reset. Cause that's, that's what we've been building towards. Klaus even says it. If you listen to his interviews, that it's a three stage process. 
And the third stage of the process is the reset, the full reset. But when their whole plan is to use technology to enslave you and to <laughs> technocracy, I mean, it doesn't seem to make much sense that some system that's so fragile that something silly like that could take down all these systems. I know it really was eye opening from the standpoint of the fragility of the systems themselves. Well, it's just the dumbest thing to me. Like I just can't even fathom if I did something that stupid, I know I would be fired. <laughs> but if you tested it on a bunch of your lab systems and it didn't cause that problem, that's very unlikely because it was such a wide scale thing. It seemed like every computer who got this update from this company caused that condition. So uh, I don't know how you could do that in your test environment and say, yeah, this is good. Send it out to everybody. But dumber shit's happened by accident, I'm uh, sure. Well, like I posted about my first impression of it this morning was that they, cause it, it from what I was seeing in the, the data that I was able to get my hands on, it did not appear to be a life and death situation. It appeared like they knew what the problem was. They were working to fix it. It was going to be resolved quickly. And it was really only affecting like the, the service sector, right? I mean, yeah, people couldn't get gas and they couldn't get, you know, they couldn't use ATMs. If people are still understand. using ATMs. I I don't even understand that. That's just stupid. That doesn't make sense. That doesn't fit into the like the picture. Windows isn't running people's fucking ATM machines <laughs> or their gas pumps. That's a good point. That is actually it's, a good point. Cuz that's usually is something based off of Linux. Yeah, or w OS2 warp, I think they're still using some shitty like 20, 30 year old operating system for ATM machines. Oh, wow. Uh, I guess maybe some have transferred to Windows. It's possible. They do have a kiosk mode, so I'm guessing you could probably program it to do something like that. Well, I'm Especially also guessing... With the, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd guess that a lot of the touchscreen interfaces... That's right that are what I'm thinking. so popular now. It's got to be based either off of Windows or Android. Nah, it was, they had that shit before. I was like, like I was saying, OS2 Warp was the name of the operating system. There was uh, the PNC ATM machines that are in all the convenience stores in my area would all run that. And as soon as like one would crash, you would see it like going into a boot loop, loading up OS2 Warp. <laughs> Huh. Interesting. But that was old, so maybe yeah. the new ones run Windows. Who knows? But my it initial... seems kind of odd. Go ahead. It seems odd that you could shut down gas pumps without an override. Hmm. I don't know. I'd have to know Just... more about how that system worked because I would imagine that they all have to tie into a main server somewhere. That main server is likely running Windows. If that goes down, they probably go with it. It's probably just a bunch of lazy people. The boss wasn't around. They're like, oh shit, we can't run. Yeah. Yeah, there was Did probably a lot of that going on too. Yeah, Did you no hear? Doubt. There's a, com a computer problem in the world. No gas today. Beat it. Yeah. <laughs> We had, it was, it was rare, but the, the last job that I had in the before times when I was working at a paint store, uh, just a few miles down the road from Langley, uh, we had a, uh, I don't remember what the name of the operating system was that ran everything, all the computers in the store, but it was, it was basically proprietary and it was rare, but it would go down every now and then. And we had to revert to paper tickets and. Uh, we weren't even able to use the, the card terminals because it was all tied into the point of sale. So you'd have to get out the old machine and, uh, you know, do the, the copy of the, the card and all of that shit. It was wild, man. But my first thought this morning was this is, 
This is just a huge data gathering operation. They want to see how people react to this. Well, because the one thing it did is it took away people's conveniences for a little bit. <laughs> I feel like I'm in the dark here, man. I didn't have a single inconvenience. I had a couple of people text me about their problems. <laughs> I, didn't have, I didn't have any problem either. Everything was fine on my end. I went to get cash out of the ATM at lunchtime to buy, buy some lunch. It worked. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Like I say, I know Yona was having problems this morning, and if he ever decides to join us tonight, uh, I'm sure he'll tell us about them. But that's that's the only you know eyewitness report that I've had so far. I haven't really heard much from anybody else. Yeah, I say going to the local grocery store today, the local liquor store. <laughs> At a sandwich shop, even went to the Walmart, but couldn't buy anything. Just looking at the weird people. Oh yeah, yeah. Any winners at the Walmart today? You know what it occurred to me that people eat too goddamn much, um, because just about everybody in the place is overweight. Yeah, Whether they'd be work working there, shopping, or driving an electric mobility scar skirt uh, cart with their fat ass hanging off the freaking seat. Yeah, Fatty They're Rascal so, Scooter. Yeah. I know. People are lovely in all sizes, but for uh Oh sure, sake, sure, yeah, yeah. For your own sake, you Healthy might want to any just size, sure. Stop. <laughs> I don't know. Seems like some people who are like morbidly obese. You keep thinking they're going to have a heart attack or some other kind of health problem, and they live forever. Well, not forever. They live well, long mean, enough for the pharmaceutical industry to make a sizable profit off of them, and then they die. Yeah, I think maybe they're like accidentally prescribed, and there's lo uh, the, the drugs that give you longevity. I, we didn't know that was a side effect. We thought it was going to kill your liver. And here it turns out, it's uh, sweeping your body of free radicals. Damn. Who knew? Yeah. Something tells me it won't be around long. So, um, how do you imagine some 20-year-old fucking clown was able to penetrate Secret Service protection with a ladder over his shoulder and an AR-15 and, you know, wander around aimlessly for a couple of minutes while they were looking for him and then disappear, end up crawling on the roof, taking shots at people. Yeah. Um, it was, uh, it was as perplexing, uh, Saturday night thinking about that as it is right now, which is why I still don't believe that's exactly how it happened. I, there, there, there have to be details missing. Uh, there have to be things that everybody is getting wrong that we don't know. We'll never know because uh, the evidence now has already all been destroyed. Last I heard, the, a couple days ago, the cops were closing off the road to the water tower and nobody was ever going to be able to get up there again. Well, I so mean, if, there was, if there was any evidence up there at all, even just like a little bit of residue or something, it's fucking gone now, man. Why would you want to know if there's any gunpowder up there on the tower? Because of the uh, alleged angles of the shots. That's why. Well, like I, like I said earlier, if uh, somebody was trying to blow his head off, because um, we know there's no possible way that some lone nut was able to, you know, evade security, climb up onto a roof that wasn't guarded for some reason with a clear shot fucking sight line to the stage. And uh, then ignore people who are pointing it out to them. Uh, <laughs> it's just beyond belief. I guess the, it's supposed to be. The it's official to be. story of this 
hits me the same way the official story of January 6th does. It's definitely fake and gay at the same time. It was definitely orchestrated. It shows all the hallmarks of being orchestrated. Um, and if the the letter that Adam Curry got last Sunday was actually from the Secret Service sniper who took the kid out, which is what he claims, there was fuckery going on. Well, I saw somebody trying to play off like they were him on X a couple of days back. I don't know if it's true or not. But, you know, it's uh, more subterfuge. What's really going on is what I want to know. What is this whole fucking shit show supposed to be keeping out of our, you know, what's it hiding from us? Because well. generally something like this. He doesn't. He didn't need it to get elected. No. I mean, the the whole Biden campaign is like crashing, and burning on itself without anything. Like they provided the can of gasoline and the matches, and they gave them to like six year olds who like fire and just like, keep playing with these until it caught on fire. Now this bumbling old man is all of a sudden he's got no clothes. All of a sudden. Everybody knew he was naked for fucking years, but now all of a sudden, it's okay to say it. I think he may be failing cognitively. Like, dude was failing cognitively when he was like 70, and here we are fucking watching him at 81 talk about how he's got plans, and you're not black if you don't for, vote for him. That's right. Every, he, had the, he made the black man uh, Secretary of Defense. Oh, and then fucking Trump last night was just like, like I, I don't know who, like if he was just off the cuff remarking or if that was his own fucking word or if it was like speech writer's words. But like, I don't know how you tell um, talk. He's talking to black and uh, Latino voters and talking about how these illegal immigrants are stealing their jobs. Like how fucking insulting and dumb is that? Like, it's only stealing so he's you people's them, jobs. He's letting them come across the border. He's getting them a plane ticket to wherever they want to go in the country. He's making sure that they have a hotel room in that city waiting for them along with, what is it? It's like $2,500 a month on a, on a prepaid visa card so that they can take the, the black people's jobs. And he's telling them that. That's fucking gangster, man. It's uh, like imagine the size of his balls. Well, imagine, to go right to the people that you're fucking in the ass and be like, "I'm fucking you in the ass. You should vote for me." Imagine telling a race that you know you fit that everybody knows is like equal with every other race, and then trying to tell them that the only jobs that you guys could get are the ones that the immigrants are stealing. That was my right. fucking point of it. Like, like really dude, that was your talking point at your national convention. Well, it's probably cause he's been talking to Kamala and she's been telling him that the black people don't know how to use computers and they, they don't know where the DMV is. Right. I thought that, I thought that was Kathy Hockley. Hey, one of them, one of them. I don't know. I get them. I get all of them mixed up. I do. It, we deserve, better clowns like these we, do. Ones already... we deserve better overlords damn it like at least fucking you know andrew cuomo was a bit of a fucking gangster when he was grabbing asses and slapping asses and doing his fucking spiel like you knew he was crooked as where, like a pop is. where is he now oh he's hiding man shit got deep He's got his Slay. brother out there running interference for him right now. I think that's what's going on. Is Chris is out there. It's like, Chris, go make a jackass of yourself for a couple of years, and then I'll reemerge. You know, it, it's funny. Like when Everyone he first will love me because you're a retard. When when he was trying to rebrand himself as a you know a, <laughs> a journalist after CNN let him go, it, it was like hysterical because he was popping up on all these different podcasts trying to show what a fucking 
honest and and uh, following the science kind of guy, and I'm damaged from the vaccine. It's like, dude, you won't even apologize for all that fucking shit. People put together clips and clips and clips of him talking his shit. Oh yeah. Well, he was on. Uh, he was on CNN five days a week. Like I don't I, know. I don't know how long his show was. I never watched it. I don't know how many years he had been doing it, but he built up quite a catalog. I can't say I've seen him pop up on anybody's podcast ever since Dave Smith like bitch slapped him, drug him, threw him down the steps, carried him back up the steps, and threw him down a couple more times. I thought he was working for PBR. Is he? That's what I thought. I don't know. I wasn't sure if he, I thought he had. Maybe he has a podcast on PBR's network, but I know he had like some Chris Cuomo something Chris Cuomo, the homo or, uh, or something. And then PBR maybe is hosting the network, but he had him on one of his shows. At least, I don't know. He had loot or uh shit thinking of all the other sellouts. Mm. Luke sold out. Burma sold out. MAGA, MAGA Extreme. Yeah, I heard about uh, Burma's turning on the waterworks. Oh my God. I, I started watching like a couple, I just, you know, just had a sick curiosity. I watched a couple of minutes of some video he put up after Trump got shot at, and it was just, God uh, saved him. He's a chosen one. Uh, I'm just, Jesus Christ, Burmas. He's wow. always had he's always had that carnival barker kind of presentation, so I guess it yeah. shouldn't surprise me that well, he started that was, going. That was one of the things I always appreciated about him too. He he was broke when he had integrity. <laughs> I hope That's it's true. Paying. I hope I hope it's paying him at least. I uh, guess it is. I don't know. He's on uh, what's he doing? He's on TNT Radio now, isn't he? Uh, I don't know if he still is or not. I kind of stopped paying attention to him when he started following around um, that other Clay. What is his name? What was his name? Clay Clark. Clay Clark. Yeah. Oh, dude, he is sketchy as fuck. Oh my god. I don't know why anybody listens to that dude. I don't know. I remember Rich had him on, and I was like, "Dude, why are you uh, putting this snake oil? Why are you putting the snake oil salesman on your podcast?" He he reminds me of one of those uh, mega church pastors without a flock. I can see that. And he's trying to like fucking grift on the whole mega thing and uh, make that as tie that to his fake mega church. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's there's lots of people grifting on mega, but I mean that's because it's a it's a large tent, right? You're that's, it that's certainly a, is. A, a massive pool to draw from like it can support multiple grips and I will. you know one of the reasons that i appreciate hotep jesus so much is he admits he's doing a maga grift he's like i don't actually believe this shit i'm just trying to make some money i'll get you some fucking views anyway yeah I uh I listened to him a few times. He's entertaining. <laughs> He's an entertaining listen. But uh, there's so many fucking things to listen to. Can't there listen are. to them all. There are. Well, that's why I typically only tune in for the Thursday night show with him and Uncle Hotep because they have a really nice back and forth. And they're usually pretty entertaining. And it's only <laughs> like a like a 2-hour commitment each week. So that's uh that's doable. Not like the shit I crank out. Fucking 12 hours a week, goddammit. I'm going to dominate your life. <laughs> yeah, there's not enough hours in the week I'm trying to get other projects off the ground. Got my uh, four starter chickens. Oh, that's four right. Chicks. That's right. How are they doing? 
they're doing awesome, getting bigger every day. They're uh, messy as hell. You know, to take their like bedding and clean it out every day out of their box, keep a heat lamp on them for like six to eight weeks until they start getting their adult feathers. And then can take them outside. I got their little chicken coop ready to go. I just have to put together the fencing to go around it so they have a little run. And when I'm out in the yard, I'm going to let them free range. Try to take care of the million ticks that are in my woods. Oh, fuck yeah, man. That's the, uh, that's the perfect remedy for it. They'll yeah, also help, they'll help keep the, uh, the rest of the yard clean as well. You can like work them around different sections. Yeah. My only problem is I have uh, cats that go outdoors and I got to make sure that they're big enough and, uh, Make sure that even when they are full grown, that uh, I make sure the cats don't make a run on them. Right. I was actually about to ask you if there were any natural predators in the area. Oh, God. There's many. There's foxes. There's coyotes. Um, there's other stray animals out there. There's raccoons. Raccoons apparently will eat your chickens, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I get, well, I mean, raccoons will eat anything. They don't give a fuck. Yeah, and they're uh, they're pretty smart too. So you got to make sure they can't get inside the cage. Yeah, and they'll fucking grin at you and, and rub their hands together before they do the shit too. It's what I, I appreciate a, about them. I have a uh, large black cat that uh, tried to take on the raccoon last time it came to the door because I had some cat food sitting on the back deck and. It came up, and my cat went out there <laughs> and got it cornered under a chair. And I was like, oh, shit, man, this raccoon's going to kill this fucking cat. So I came out, and as the raccoon was running away from me, my my cat fucking ran and took a swipe at its ass on its way out. <laughs> he that stupid sounds monster. like something a cat would do. Yeah, exactly. I had a previous cat that uh, took on a groundhog that used to live under my shed. And when I say used to, because the cat fucking killed it. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I, I actually saw like a square off in the middle of the yard one day. And this was like one of the biggest house cats I've ever had. The thing was huge. And yeah, he swapped, he whopped that thing upside his fucking head and chased it away. <laughs> And then one of my other cats took one of its babies and uh, I saw it dragging it out into the woods by its neck. And then I didn't see groundhogs anymore ever since then. That's a good cat. Yeah, they've chased off everything. I have a, a female cat that it's the uh, big black one's daughter that is like a predator. It catches birds and tries to eat them. <laughs> I think that's what Rose is trying to figure out right now. Because ever since she destroyed the uh, the blind in the window, she's been an outdoor cat. So she mm. has a lot of time to, to brush up on those skills. Nice thing is, other than like the the other cats that are already in the neighborhood, like all the rest of the critters are now leaving the yard alone. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and now that she's fixed, you don't have to worry about you know having more and more cats. Exactly. Exactly. That's what caught me up. My uh, the cat that my kid brought home, I didn't have the heart to get its balls cut off, and everything was fine until a stray started hanging out in the yard, and then seven kittens later, I finally got him fixed. I actually, I got them fixed after the first litter, and somehow the second litter came. Every time I was going to take him in for his appointment to get fixed, he would cut his paw or have to go on antibiotics for something and uh, kept pushing it back. <laughs> Fortunately, even though he's lost his will to live, he doesn't have any more kittens. Uh, 
Phytophiliac's cat, who is the mother to Briar Rose, just had her second litter of kittens about a month ago. It was right before, I think it was right before we went to Pueblo, as a matter of fact. Because I think she'd only had the, the kittens for maybe a couple of days. Or maybe it was like right after we left. I think it was actually right after we left. Let me see. I might be able to find the answer to that question. Without yeah, too that's, much trouble. That's the problem with the female ones. If you don't get them fixed when they're young, and then they do eventually get pregnant, then you have to wait after they have the kittens before you can get them fixed. And they tend to sneak out and get pregnant before you can get them fixed. Oh, silly me. That was weeks ago in a text message conversation. What was I thinking? Oh, well. Well, it's been a whirlwind week. And then the week before that was all about senile old Joe, finally. Um, I don't know. I guess it's more like the media finally acknowledged that he wasn't wearing pants when he was up there diddling himself. How, how fucking embarrassing are they going to get with this ritual? I mean, I, I know it's I'm the not sure. I'm not sure because now you've got Biden has come out publicly and said he's not going anywhere. This but at is the same after time, Schumer everybody's has under- called for him to sh- step down after Pelosi has said he needs to step down after Adam Schiff has said he needs to step down. They got like a coalition of corn pop and uh, all of his bad dudes to tell Joe Biden, you need to cool it, bro. I mean, is this That's the dying throes? It was. Is this the dying throes of the enterprise? <laughs> is there some other faction about the, I think, yeah. I think, uh, I think Dr. Up. Jill is power man. I think that's what it is. Well, they said the same thing about Nancy Reagan when I was a kid. That she yeah. was, she was running everything, and like, hey, well, she was running I mean, trains. That was that was uh, documented. <laughs> right. I mean, she was part of the train, and you know what I'm saying, Rob. I yeah yeah yeah. Who was it? Uh, Mr. T said she gave a hell of a blowjob. Did he? Yep. <laughs> Well, he was there as part of the Drug Free America program. As they were dealing more cocaine than... uh, Just say no. Just say no, because we're making... It's one of those, uh, I don't know, passive-aggressive statements. Put this in your mouth. That's right. Yeah, I remember the 80s. Very repressed. Conservative times. I, I see the swing coming back. Oh, you but, think? Do you think the, we can we can get all the way to the the Handmaid's Tale side of of the conservative dystopia? Can we get that far? I don't know. They both offer such nightmarish proposals to me that I I know why they use pro wrestling figures. I know it seems. Uh, no, no, like general adults want to have conversations about politics, religion, anything that there's any kind of conflict or controversy. It's like the pussification of society. Nobody has an opinion anymore. It's impolite to actually bring up shit that determines what your kids are going to do or their kids are going to do. And how about the rest of us? We just want to be left the fuck alone. Yeah, we just want to live our lives and do our thing without somebody constantly trying to tell us that we can't do it. That's why it's refreshing to get out to the uh, meetup in real life with people. Absolutely. And, uh, hear everybody's stories. Get the climate. What's up, Yona? Damn. There he is. A, I don't have a selfie oh, stick, man. That's what I need. <laughs> selfie stick. Oh, hell. oh, shit. That's a grand piano. Yeah, man. I, shit, I've done made like over a hundred dollars cash. Sweet. 
easy money. Every you, time I play a song, you get, get to eat candy. dinner tonight. That's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> man. Oh, it, it's nice too. I, this is um, this is actually the piano that I recorded the song that you debuted on the uh, music potluck the other night. Nice. Two two trees remix. Yeah. Yeah, I, I played it and sang the vocals on this grand piano over here. Nice. Man, they got awesome signal here in the big fancy hotel. Shout out to the Winchester at the Delta by Marriott. Ah. Lambo. Yeah, yeah. Marriott does it right. That's for sure. But uh, I worked for you know, the Marriott Corporation for a little while. All day and all night, man. It's just been constant complaints from the the plebiscite about the uh, internet issues. The, well, the internet particularly the, the banking issues where like bank cards and other things weren't working at um, POS, um, which is either point of sale or piece of shit. I think it, it means it's both. both. It's both. Actually. It's both. It's always been both. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, no. Career service Everywhere. industry employee here to tell you it has always been both. Every single POS I have ever worked with in my life has been a POS. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's why it's called POS. That's right. There every you go. Place, <laughs> every place I went today had no computer problems at all, especially my job, which is all computer problems, and there was no computer problems. <laughs> Have you been checking if you are plugging in your computer, sir? Oh, that was the problem all along. Yeah. God. Thanks, Ajit. Thanks, Ajit. I appreciate that. Nine out of ten IT professionals say it's uh, usually user error. Yeah. It's somewhere between the uh, the chair and the keyboard is what they say. Yep. Where the problem sits. Yep, there you go. Control Alt Delete. I, I did see some blue screen of death action at a couple of the gas stations, though. It's for real. Oh, did you really? You should have taken a picture. Yeah. Would love to have gotten a picture of that. Oh, I love me some B saw action. Sounds like the blue screen of death. <laughs> Sounds like post apocalyptic shit out there. Yeah. Cash only. Yeah. I love it, man. Keep the uh, the rest of Fuck the yeah, man! Got like me some more work cash work. money. All we need now is blowing hookers. Bro, who was that? Was it Gregory Walker who was on the Telegram and he was sharing where one of these fucking sure that even uh, goddamn solicitors, salesmen, whatever fucking bots was, was like trying to sell them on some type of fucking NFT or crypto scam or something and. And G Dubs was like, "Hey, I ain't got much money or anything. I don't have a virtual wallet, but can we trade some blow and hookers or maybe some <laughs> weed or something?" And it kept going, which then proved that it was a bot. Uh, it was obviously a bot drizzle, you know. Yeah, the normal human would get like offended at a certain point. Anyway, <laughs> maybe, maybe. Yeah, I am I here? Wouldn't... Yeah, you're here, RBL. You were a little garbled. I'm traveled. First. But I think it, I time travel. I'm I'm watching the stream and it's just the two of you and Yona's not here. And then as soon as oh, I no, I'm it, here, Yona's talking and I was like, "Are we in the green room? Why is he talking over dude? He's talking over Rob." And then like I was like, "Oh, the stream." Oh, he does that all the time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He does talk over Rob all the time. It's all right. Oh, <laughs> uh, it's even worse when I'm on shrooms. Yeah, they well, know. He, yeah, they he, know. He talks over everybody. He talks over me. Uh, he was probably talking over Steve, uh, and Steve was probably talking over him a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Fuck, I was even talking over Charlie, man. He's trying to tell these funny fucking Jeff Berwick stories, and goddamn right, Yonah's you fucking I remember ruling that. on the stack. I actually remember Wouldn't that. shut the fuck up, man. But, yeah, at one point, it was sit the fuck down, and then I couldn't shut the fuck up, man. Kill the fucking shrimp. Yeah, I saw you sitting there staring. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, when it, it, oh man, god damn, did I have to walk right into a fucking art museum when that shit beat me between the fucking eyes? God damn. Wow, that, that was oh, some intense right. art, man. I, Shout out dude, to I, Jeff. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this, and uh, 
so that it, it gets on the record. Uh, but Rob, I cannot thank you enough for what was probably the best birthday present I've ever had in my life. Thank you, man. Cheers. Cheers. So the three of you all hooked up at the uh, yeah. wherever the event was last week or something? Right? Yeah. Wow. Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago now. Yeah. Yeah, it was a whirlwind. I drove a long, long, long way. A lot of choice. people did. I was surprised um, how far people came from. What was it for And I'll, I'll have you know, Rob, every time I looked down and saw a 33 on the fucking odometer or on the goddamn clock or anything, I was always thinking of you and Shelly, buddy. <laughs> and the fucking Masons. <laughs> Whoa! Is that a heart or a vagina? What the hell is this? Yeah, then I got back to New Jersey and got off exit 33 to go to my house. Oh, my God. Yeah, that, that kind of looks like a JJ to me. But anyway, because we got this flood wall art going on here. Oh, that's local what? art? Yeah. Not like Pueblo, though. Oh, wow. It was only an hour late coming in from New York Penn Station tonight, but the Amtrak Cardinal has finally passed through about fucking are they, time. Are they using Windows servers to run their trains too? <laughs> no, so like it's, I, it's I, where I, it's uh, where I they come up to. Uh, bullshit that people are saying was out because of this. It's not that many people well, use Windows. The Amtrak is always running late because once it comes through uh, Charlottesville, it goes down to one lane track from Clifton Forge off the Buckingham Branch all the way through like Hinton and Prince and Thurlow. So they have to pull. They're supposed to take priority, but they don't. And, but Wow, you can't even hardly see the fucking Amtrak sign for all the bushes. Where the fuck is it? Bless 1984 yeah, more what? Ashland Amtrak. I still can't. Oh, it's less 1984. Ashland, Kentucky. Yeah. More. Uh, Note the ashes on the cigarette. It's oh, an Ashland. Okay. It really is. Yeah, Big ashtray. Full of meth heads. I yeah. thought it was going to be another movie for some reason. Like. Oh North my North God, North Drizzle. North. We've got some serious New World Order fucking. What in the hell is this Luciferian shit going on here? God damn. What are you oh, even talking no. about? How do I how do I make my camera switch around here? There should be a little button that looks like a like a uh, uh, I don't know what do you call it? It'd be like a circle with arrows that'll maybe flip it around. I I I, I saw oh, something. There we go. Today. There's one of them fuckers. There's the asshole with the hammer. Asshole Where's with hammer. Sickle? Where's the sickle? And then that bitch has got the sickle. Oh. What the fuck, man? Wow. And then what in the fuck uh -oh. is this thing in the middle here? Man, they just put this shit up here. God damn it. What the fuck is that? Looks like a bunch of broken arrows or something. Is this some like... All right, all right, all right. so there's, <laughs> there's, there's dude with the hammer. All nice legs. At least he does the top and the bottom. Okay, let's get this other thing. Get my aha! What is there it that? Is. Where are you? What in the fuck is that? I'm at the Ashland, Kentucky Riverfront Park on the banks of um, the uh, Dioxin Trench. We like to call the Ohio River. Okay, so that's Goddess of the Harvest, and that. Whoa! The, seriously, did they? Oh my God! This dude's anatomically correct. Balls. Wow. Is there balls? That no. Makes sense. You know. No, no. There's. We're more there inclusive is now, so we there's can have crack, balls. But I, holy shit! All right, hold on. It hold goes on, all the on. way up into the crack, but there's okay. no balls. Let okay. me go around all the front. Right. This guy right. might be an epsilon. All right. I think he might have already clipped the penises. Well, go go in and. Damn it. All right, we're going to the front view. Going to the front view. All right, hold up just a minute. All we see is you, Yona. 
Let's see right. the statue. We can't, we can't see any what? any of what you're looking oh, at. Oh, but I'm hush up for a minute. <laughs> RBL. <laughs> oh well, shit! Now RBL's going away. Oh no! Hey. I just can't see Yona's cam. I keep uh, refreshing the Streamlabs, trying to. Uh, none of us can really. I mean, we can see Yona's camera, but it's not. It's a still frame for me. Is it? No. Yeah. That's uh. I, that's fine. technology. Yeah. I would have to go and turn um, off the Wi-Fi or whatever. Right. To the, the he, feeding the that's shit fine. across the house. That's fine. What's he on your What's off. on your mind tonight, man? He cut his fucking dick off, son of a bitch. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. The, what's the What was the the festival you guys went to two weeks ago? The third uh, Eye Third Eye Carnival. Carnival. Yeah. Okay. Third Eye Carnival was around. Was it around Texas or something? It was in Colorado. It was oh, in okay. uh, Pueblo, Colorado. So it was Whoa. in the south. I know Pueblo, yeah. Colorado. That's where you write to if you want to like, yes, do anything in the eighties off of the commercial. Yes, that's that. That was what I was saying. It was like where back back before there was multi level marketing schemes. There was scam yeah. junk part, and before Walmart was widespread, you could get cheap plastic trinkets. From uh, a PO box in Pueblo, Colorado. That's right. If you send yeah. a, ch a check or money order, <laughs> post office in Pueblo was popping. Yeah, that was like God, uh, I can't what believe Delaware I got that out. To, wow. Uh, you know, Shell Corporation tax evader guys in Delaware. Uh, Pueblo. Pueblo's uh, a beautiful area all around there. I mean, Pueblo itself is a little shady. You know, <laughs> my dad went there took a car trip from west virginia to colorado went to pikes peak ever heard of that place oh yeah, yeah that's over it. by colorado springs he we took pictures it. photos and i i they captured my imagination when i was a little kid looking at them i was like man that's the most beautiful place on earth right yeah. we went out to it's, um it's pretty breathtaking bishop's, bishop's castle some crazy dude built a castle out of stone and uh, put a head, big dragon head up at the top that he apparently hooked a propane tank up and used to have it blowing out fire every night. That was really cool. And um, the Garden of the Gods was awesome, too. Didn't That's get to really weird. So this chick has this thing growing through the middle of her hand. Um. See where uh, 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 there it is. Yeah. What's it look like? Oh, she's the light bearer. <laughs> I should have known. Hail Satan. Anyway, Satan. Oh, <laughs> the light bearer. The light bringer. Fuck yeah, I'm fucking Luciferian shit. God damn it. But it's a female. Yeah. Well, yeah. Just like the Statue of Liberty. Well, uh, I, that's I, not I, actually. I, a woman, hey, though. I saw Statue something of interesting. Liberty is not a woman, right? Well, well, now this one here on top of the, like, appears the, to be female, but she's got no tits. The other guy appears to be male, but he has no penises or testicles. Um, this hmm. is weirding me out. Yeah, I got to get the fuck away from this thing. I would I, recommend I saw it. Some, I would get I saw far some, away. You're in Asheville today. Ashland, Kentucky. <laughs> oh, Ashland. Asheville, yep. North Carolina versus Ashland, Kentucky. Gotcha. Oh, Asheville's even worse. That, that's yeah, out of the town of fucking know, Commodore Vanderbilt built. I know with, with the built there. Hit me up for some money. Ugh. <laughs> what did you see today, I guess Rob? Bad all over. European Union money that if you take two denominations and stick the edges together, it forms a Satan. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's right. I want one of those bills. I I think I have a couple from my last trip over there. <laughs> I gotta I gotta find it and check it out because remember Rob, I row, we row, you row, it's all to hell. That's right. We're in a big European <laughs> canoe. There's always like oh. aliens and demons on the money. It's funny. <laughs> so there is a female deity in the Albanian mythos by the name of, and I'm probably going to butcher this, uh, Prende? 
also referred to as Hilly, 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 nah, I can't pronounce it. So the Star of Light. Prende is a dawn goddess associated with light and the morning star, Venus. That's the only oh. thing I have found. Wow. Oh, it does say station. You just can't read it. Cause the yeah, everything else says light. Lucifer. So I guess if Lucifer wants to be, uh, it can be female. Well, what's the connect connection between uh, Baphomet or Baphomet and Lucifer? Is it Baphomet is, is a different over there. Uh, entity <laughs> from Lu Lucifer? Is the the best way okay. I can explain it? Yeah. Then who the hell's Ball? <laughs> Yet another entity. Oh, he's the guy they Man. spray on the chemtrails. They spray Barium, ball. Aluminum. Yeah. I've I've Stop. heard of uh, I've heard of men doing that with like that X body spray. The they X. spray their balls. Hey, hey, we're at Liberty Radio. We're not down with Baphomet. It's the other dude. Um, what's his name? Fuck it, we ball. There you go. Yeah, that's him. <laughs> that's right, the Nigerian. <laughs> that's right. I got Ando Try kicked off YouTube person. for talking about a vaccine, but, you know, Skibbity Toilet is still up. Okay. Just saying. I don't know what that is. What is that? I. It's a very gnarly video that should not just be up. Should I go looking for it? or No. No? It's, okay. it's like worse than two girls one cup i guess oh good lord no i don't oh, want to go looking for anything like that hey now no. i'm yeah. a millionaire hair tougher than nigerian hair that's right yeah back okay. before joe rogan became you know the podcast sensation that he is he had a uh website joe rogan.net and uh you know i had watched a lot of his stand-up at that time and thought he was amusing so i check out his site regularly because he always posts stuff from the internet and he posted uh Death by Horsecock. And uh, I still have a uh, bad oh. image. I, the the oh, sounds that were made. Sent that to me on how, how did we get over to the subject of Chank Uger and the Young Turks all of a sudden? Someone well, sent me that gif on Discord, Rob. It, this, so I, this know, I know instantly what you're talking about. Somebody it wasn't that a, likes you? It wasn't a gif. This was like the full video. And, right. Uh, I but got I know to that watch the guy that get killed a man by a horse, allows a horse to mount him, and it is catastrophic, and he dies. Well, his boyfriend was cheering it on until yeah. the horse fucking went. The, the the horse did a little whinny, like and he went fall Roman deep. Empire in a six second gif or whatever the guy sent me. I was just like, wow. Balls deep was colon perforation, and uh, I think the horse got his nut was the fucking the the good part of the story. Yeah, uh, I don't know. No I don't know what, harm to I, the making of this film. I don't know what lesson I was supposed to be learning because it really wasn't something I would have ever, <laughs> you know, tried or brought a friend to try. <laughs> Unfortunately, I know what that is though because someone sent, recently sent that to me. Recently, man, it I've been, living, it, it, I've been living with that scar for at least fifteen I've years the, now. What the fuck was that? I heard the uh, the rumor that's what happened to was it Catherine the Great. Catherine the Great. What some some uh, queen or some some I don't know who, what her name was, but she was in the fucking horses. You oh, never wow. heard that? Uh, that was Lady Godiva, wasn't it? No, that's the girl that rode the horse naked. But yeah, she was into horses. Yeah, but no, there was like a queen <laughs> that took a horse dick. I mean, there. there's there's a, there's a there's a big fucking wow. difference between riding a horse naked and Man, riding no, a horse sure. and riding a horse you know, naked, so right. to speak. <laughs> Is there really Rob? <laughs> I I hope so. I don't know. I've no again. I've known a lot of women yeah, in my life. Catherine Every single one of them that I, has ever sat on the back of a, a horse myth, said they enjoyed it. You know, that was one of the most disappointing parts of that like public service film of the horse. The horse wasn't wearing a condom. 
Who knows where that horse's cock had been before it fucking perforated that guy's colon. Could have been in Nancy Reagan's mouth. You're absolutely <laughs> right, Rob. Yeah. Throat go. <laughs> Nancy could have taken it, I hear. You know, honestly, I have no fucking idea why in the hell At Ashland, least for Kentucky, eight seconds, you know. Is on the Lewis and Clark Trail. That makes no sense. It was Catherine the Great. It, there was a rumor or urban legend that she died while fucking a horse. Sorry, I well, it up. it's not even real. So there, there was an urban legend when I was like a teenager that some local news um, personality had stuck a gerbil up his ass and had to have an emergency removed in the hospital. And then Richard I was talking Gere. to. <laughs> yeah, I heard no, that no. about I heard Richard, it was Richard Gere. Gere. Yeah, Richard Gere. That yeah, also happened to Tim Ear, the weather guy in Huntington. Same thing. He I, was I think it probably was a real thing so, for some time. I don't you think know? it was because I, 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 Lemmy Winks. I, I used to work with a, a girl years ago who grew up in Michigan, and she told me that that same rumor was going around about their local news personality. Yeah. And there was a dude in Philadelphia named Jerry Panicoli, who everybody was saying he was the gerbil man. And yeah. I, I think that I think that you know before the internet, fucking shit like that would spread around, and I think the CIA CIA got their kicks off of that shit. Yeah, they're the called old, urban legends, oh, that, and yeah. that's why they're urban legends. The old know. telephone, the old telephone game. Yeah, <laughs> I moved. I moved to a new town. Look, look, look at and what these fucking kid. rubes will believe. Mm -hmm. There was a kid with a name like so similar to mine, but just barely different. And he actually got caught putting peanut butter on it for the dog, you know. Oh, speaking of, Ew. before I forget, because uh, we're already an hour and 20 minutes in. I didn't even realize we'd been going that long. I just want to make sure to uh, give a big shout out to everyone listening in Bluffdale, Utah tonight. Thank you, boys. What do you guys want on your pizza tonight? <laughs> I'm going to be out that part of the country at the end of uh, August. Oh, going what's going on? IT, there's an IT trade show going down in Vegas. Oh, shit. Then, yeah, uh, man. Oh, wow. I'm taking advantage of somebody else paying for my flight and all that stuff. I'm getting a rental car. Too. I'm going to go check out the Hoover Dam and the oh, yeah. uh, Grand Canyon. Nice. So, added a couple more states to my list. Rob has four chickens. Hell yeah. Um, in the winter, when there's less light, the egg laying will slow down. You can put a little cayenne pepper in their feed or oh, give yeah? them extra light with any kind of light bulb and it'll kick back up. The other thing, their eggshells, if you bake them like on a cookie sheet and then crumble them up, and sprinkle them into their foods, they'll get their calcium back and keep having strong eggshells. They won't have the thin ones and have problems. Too nice. Thing. And give them a, a dust of, bath. Oh my God. A Sorry. Dust thing of what? They need a dust bath to keep the insects and stuff off. Just like some thin, thin, like or fine dirt dry. It has to be dry, like covered. And they just get down in it and wrap their feathers around and the dirt cleans. Knocks all the bugs off and stuff. All right, I'm gonna turn my camera off. Here. Ashes, ashes are great for it. I'm loving the tips. Sorry, there Sorry. we go. I just yeah, I mind. saw I saw everything that RBL was just talking about at Kanoko's house. So that's how I know he's he knows what he's talking about. Chickens are fucking. We've had chickens for a long they're time. They're awesome, man. Yeah, yeah they're cool little. Little dinosaur creatures. Yeah. They, they, that's it. That's how I, you, perfectly how you would describe them. I saw one jump up into a and take a baby bird out of a nest and just fucking wreck wreck it on the side of a brick, like a little really uh, Holy thing, shit. and then swallow the motherfucker. And the rest of them were coming after it, and, and the guy ran, and so it just like was eating it whole while it was running for the rest of one of that baby. And the baby was like. Mom, I want a worm, and this fucker's like, Rah! like a tyrannosaurus on it, man. It's crazy, you know. It's great. If the, if it was fifteen feet tall, you know. That's nature, man. 
That's yeah. fucking real shit right Bad-ass there. Badass predator. That's the not. That's is. not Disney. It's not sanitized <laughs> for uh, the children. That's that's real fucking life. Love it. That was crazy that I saw that. I felt fortunate that I saw it. It was so fucking nuts. Like as soon as we let the chickens out, it they they were listening to that little baby bird. And as soon as I opened this thing, they just all went for it. And the one just jumps up like Michael Jordan and just snatched it. <laughs> I mean the the nest was inside of a wooden box on top of a like a brick outdoor like cooking chimney thing. So it was like four feet high. And this chicken just like, yeah, they can jump. It was, it was something. Yeah, sorry, sorry to hijack your show to talk about chickens. But no, it's fine, man. They are, they are Apparently, like that's dinosaurs. what that's what They're people want to hear about. So, you know, have at it. Yeah, <clears throat> I got four of them, and two of them are a breed that supposedly lay an egg every twenty-five hours. Black star. Black sex link, whatever you want to call them. They got multiple Black names. sex links. Yeah, those are great. Yeah, we've got a few now. We bred them. My wife bred them. Anyway. She's she's in charge of all that shit. We have a little uh, incubator. And we've used oh, nice. it a couple of times. We had, we had like hatched way too many roosters, so we just gave away nine roosters. And I was like... Yeah, I'm not ready for any roosters yet. I got a lot yeah, of yeah. You have to show them who's boss. That's the thing. Or they'll like constantly be after you unless you just one time scare them and then they'll be like asshole. But they won't come after you anymore. The little uh, hens, they're getting used to me handling them because you got to clean out their bedding every day. So I take them out, pick them up. They're pretty, uh, they're pretty cool with it. Yeah. They're, they're cool for like, um, Keeping down ticks and mosquitoes and all that stuff. They go after bugs. Yeah. I live in the woods, so it's going to be very beneficial. Yeah. Oh, you got to get you some guineas. Don't just settle for roosters. Get some guineas. Maybe a if peacock. You get guineas, then you got to worry about hawks. And, and like, guineas get preyed on more. Uh, you got to smaller. worry about hawks regardless. I love right. the sound of guineas. I don't chicken. worry about fucking. Hawks. I, that sound I, I, that guineas make. Imagine if you got a rooster and a flock of guineas and peacocks all singing in the morning, man. Holy shit, your neighbors are going to hate you. Yeah, exactly. Peacocks will kick your ass. Because you got the <laughs> fucking guineas. They sound like a fucking machine gun. You got the fucking rooster going off. Then you got the fucking peacock. Ah! 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 Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes my neighbors be running those fucking things over. <laughs> Driving on hey, my man, lawn. Peacocks make great feathers. My neighbor has guineas or miniatures or whatever, tiny little chickens. And they're always getting swooped on. And Just killed. think, if you ever wanted Katy Perry to visit your house, tell her you got a peacock. She wants to see it. I don't so know you guys if I want to be around. I don't know. I think uh, I think Russell She's Brand still, showed uh, her his peacock, and she dumped him. So there's that. Anyways, poor Rusty hey, Rockets. So what do you guys think the old man's going to do this week? Is he going to step down and uh, let the American Psycho take his place, or let Camel Harris? My money's on fucking nabbing gruesome from California. Nope, it's too soon for him. He is he's universally hated. He that it was going to actually be Kamala Harris with a white guy for the VP. A white guy? Huh. That's what Jimmy Dore said. A white guy Democrat. Schumer's too old. I mean, because I didn't hear this whole Everyone show. Everyone hates him. Adam Schiff. So he's out. Kamala Harris Pete. and a white guy? Pete yeah. Buttigieg. Yeah. Pete Buttigieg. Booty job. Oh, dude, they, you, you, they hate no, him almost as much. They're as not they going to use Chip. booty fudge. No, they're not. No. They're they not, know. They're, they know he doesn't play. They're not trying to win, but they know they can't put the old man up there. I mean, it's pretty obvious. Uh, 
Yeah, if they're just throwing chum in the water, yeah, they'll go with Pete. Yeah. What about what about Jamie Raskin? He like, he's a douchey liberal from Maryland. It's like the Walter Mondale sacrifice. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. If they don't run Oprah slash Big Mike, I don't know what the fuck they is smoking. They don't want to win. Big bike would kill it. It's it's like big bike would fucking rule it, son. It's, it's, it's obvious it's, that it's pendulum is the one that needs to be in office the next four years for all of the horrible shit to happen so that yep. they can destroy it's because it's this is what it's yeah. gonna be. The, it, that's everything what his, that his, they accomplished. That's his card. Yeah, that's everything that they accomplished the, the first the four years reserve. allegedly is all going to come back and be torn apart. Bullshit. Yeah. Yep. It's it, it's so obvious what they're what going to be like a wrecking up. ball, Miley Cyrus. You guys are like making literate ball. as hell. You know that Trump was synonymous with bankruptcy for years. Correct. <laughs> Correct. Like and guess what's about to happen news. to the United States? The CNN. Donald Trump in bankruptcy proceedings yep. again. Let's talk about it again for an hour. Like, that is no exactly reason. correct. Why? Why? To drill you're, into your fucking head. You're fired. Because we're not going to blame the Federal Reserve. We're not going to blame I mean, anybody, but we're going to find a nice, convenient scapegoat. This bankruptcy man. That's that's really what I think. Yeah, I think you're. Time, so. I, I think you're absolutely yeah. correct. I, I'd like to address a uh, scandal that the drizzle brought to our attention. He thought that uh, maybe the um, the dancer, entertainer, um, attractive woman who was speaking at the RNC on behalf of Trump may have been paid off by him for sex. Oh, oh. If, he's, if he's like an egomaniac and he's like, oh, this is the one they all want. Kanye hit this. I'll tap it. What was her name? Oh, Amber Rose. Oh, Amber Rose. Uh, yeah, uh, that was that was Kanye's girl, right? Yeah. That's, yeah, that's how she got it known, right? Yeah, he might have. I don't know. Running I don't around, pay running around wearing like uh, how people get down. I really Ada's don't. visor for a fucking crotch covering, like just fucking following him around with a leash on. Or whatever. All right, I got to jump off the phone and jump into my studio chair. Give me a second. All right, we'll save Roll the spot for you. I guess. I don't know. We'll see what happens when he gets back in. This will be fun. I think maybe. How about Paul Kogan? Did you guys talk about that yet? Oh, yeah. We were. um, I I was very uh, distraught. (laughs) It's like fucking. Yeah, yeah, it's like it's like the whole thing was tailored to 12 year olds. And um, what I've unfortunately found is that's the kind of the mentality of most adults these days. We've been chemically neutered and programmed to be perpetual children. It, you, you, could, you, you could start talking about the local sports ball team and have like a heated back and forth debate for Captain, hours. And yeah, nobody would and, have and they would nobody know would, statistics. They would know dates, when the events transpired, what was going on, subtext. That, not only that, they would have a good time. They wouldn't be angry at the end. They'd still be all buddy buddy with you. But if you start talking about the politics, and they're like, oh, whoa, whoa, that's not cool, man. Oh, yeah. But actually, I was out at a an event yesterday at a uh, old car museum with a bunch of salespeople, and everybody was very uh, interested in what my opinion was because I, you know, I've known these guys for years, and they're very interested in my opinion on the whole Trump thing. I was like. Well, what do you think? There's the the obvious things you can prove. Like, nobody gets up on a fucking roof and shooting distance of anybody under protection of any security service unless somebody wants them up there. Um, Dude's dead. If anybody was shooting off bullets, I don't know if it was him. We'll never know because the FBI figured it out. He acted alone, and uh, that's all there is to it. That's right. Case and closed. No, he's dead now. And, and, so, yeah, he's uh, dead now. You know, in so general, that's what happens. You just in have general. to be careful. <laughs> Bill Gates. Yeah, yeah exactly, Bill. <laughs> that's, that's exactly how it goes. You know, when you climb up yeah. on a roof. Yeah, Bill, the- Bill's making his move, right? Like with uh, with his Microsoft 
helping out with the uh, what is that that is company it, that works with WEF that wants to bring about the Whitney Webb was talking about wants to bring about the um, you mean the like E nine eleven type shit you know you mean the, the the fucking philanthropist who's never fed anybody or drilled a well or done anything for the upkeep. Or maybe the guy who figured out if you buy all the media that everyone he buys carbon right. credits, Rob. I'm pretty sure when those dudes smashed a pie in his face, he decided we all needed to die. So I kind of like yeah. blame those guys yeah. a little bit. That's the moment he decided it was, yeah. I mean, yeah. it should have been, you know, modern day, there might have been a little fentanyl in that pie if we were lucky. That, and, that, and mm-hmm. all the people like me who were pirating copies of Windows so they could play Unreal Tournament. <laughs> yeah. You were the bane of his existence, RBL. Well, that was back before they figured out a way to make you have to check in with your software license every so often or they'll disable your fucking products. Back in the old days, it was the Wild West. All you needed was a fucking code and a copy of the software and you could run anything. Oh shit! Back it was, in, it was back like in a the old days, you used to be able to buy a complete Darby. game. That too, and you didn't have to connect online to right. be able to play it. Right, you weren't having to fucking constantly update it to add new features and and fucking maps and skins and. Oops! New terms of service. Well, I mean, that's all. Damn it! Good. I can't say nigger anymore. That that was all good for the gameplay. As far as getting like downloaded, you know, bug fixes First time and all I've that ever shit. heard that from you in my life. Second time I've said it on years. the air now. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You're making a point. Yes. It's intellectual. It escapes me right now because I'm way too fucking high, but I love So it. am I. That's all right. I just yeah. the there. audience will figure it out. Yeah, they'll figure it out. That's the best part There's of some it. Smart cookies out there. That's right. Some smart cookies out there. It's I'm sure. It's scary. And in here, yes, sir. Yeah, so I'm super interested to see how this whole next week plays out. We had like the well, the breakdown, the feeble old man who now all of a sudden uh, everybody's agreeing he's fucking senile and needs to go. Mm-hmm. Like they didn't know this forever, and then now like whether it was a fucking fake attempt or just. Oh, it's the deep state trying to take him out and now just believe even more in him. Get the evangelical evangelical people behind him and he was ordained by Jesus back when he was, you know, pulling out sloppy on some porn star and making her sign agreements not to talk about it. He was in, ordained by Jesus. You're an industrious bastard, but what you're not is the uh, the all-encompassing weed smoker you claim to be. Because out in Colorado, oh. I don't know if it was the mushrooms or the heat or what have you, but there was people fucking smoking circles around the owner. Mister Smoke More Weeds, I had to say it. Sorry, man, I had to bring it. Yeah, out. yeah, there was a point. Friday <laughs> night, dude, we smoked so much. Let's weed throw down right now, there. yeah. Put your fucking joints where your fucking mouth is. <laughs> from from the the moment hour, that the high Yona, yeah, from the moment that the high Yona showed up at the Liberty Radio Studios until we got back, we were smoking the whole time. Yeah, no, like, we stopped. never stopped uh, unless we were asleep. And Yona wakes up at four twenty a.m. to get high, so. Yep, even in the hotel rooms. Uh, he can vouch for that. Every morning he'd wake up, I'm already fucking out. I mean, y'all can throw your darts all you want. All I know is I was fucking high for like a week solid. And I had a, had a pretty good psychedelic experience in the middle of that too. I mean, it got to the point, Drizzle was like, bro, you've already smoked like three bowls in the last hour. You really want another one? Yeah. And, and he'd, he'd be like, "Bro, I'm good. I, I'm I'm really I'm still high from the last bowl." Twenty minutes but, ago. Twenty minutes. Twenty minutes ago. But Yona just—that's you. That's you. Slow and steady, winning races with the bowl. I mean, bloom, bloom, bloom. 
Some I kid mean, came be- up with a blunt this long and was like, <laughs> and had a fucking blow dryer, and you're like, no. It so, sounds to, like. <laughs> to be fair, when you're looking at the same scenery over and over and over again for over like five, six hours, you know, it tends to feel like you just. Did we smoke a bowl five minutes ago? That is ah, true. Right. That is true. Yeah. We had a much different view going back down from the way that we came up because the way that we drove up, it was just flat and boring and like a bunch oh. of two lane roads with posted speed limit of 75 fucking miles an hour. God damn, I love driving out west. You can haul ass. And if you don't, get the fuck out of the way. But um, on the way back, we took this different route where we cut off at, um, I want to say it was called Manzanola. Yeah, yep. Manzanola. Little Apple. Yeah, yeah Little Apple. Yeah, that, that's where we cut off the, the main drag there, the U.S. Route 50 that I grew up on in Nova. Um, good old U.S. 50. But um, when we took that route, Bro, went down on this fucking rock ass canyon and all these killer fucking views. I wanted to stop so many times and take pictures, but I was too busy smoking weed. Um, but there was nowhere to stop. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. There was, yeah, no oh, yeah, there was, there was nothing. Absolutely no fucking shoulder and like a straight drop off. Um, Is that the same 50 that goes through WV? Yep. Same one goes through graphing okay. and all that shit. Yeah, one of the first times. Uh, yeah, US. I, I got high. I was in a fucking muscle car with these older guys. And they were listening to the metal so fucking loud and driving like 100, 110 miles an hour on fifty. Fuck yeah! <laughs> Fuck yeah! I was like, I was like fucking fourteen. I was like, this is so fucking. Now, now cool. which which stretch were you on? Were you on the stretch cutting across like uh, by Salem? Down? Oh wow! It goes right right next to Salem. I used to live there when I was like younger. I went to high school there for a while and stuff. Bro, that, that's not a straight level road. That's that's no shit. Straight. It was fucking holy shit. Not that, that, it was not fucking safe fuck, at all. Those people were oh my god, <laughs> very fun. Let's let's put it that way. <laughs> I remember I, I was sharing this I room the one time name, with these guys on my named um, Woody and Smurf. Seriously, Woody and Smurf, um, crackheads, um, and uh, but you know they were also chain right. sawyers, and and they worked on a you know they went out and did logging and you know fucking driving a skitter and dragging fucking butt logs around. Anyways, um, so they had we had this house in Raywick and I was renting a room and they were renting a room and um, anyways, uh, I get home one day from surveying. And I noticed that, like, all of the furniture in the living room has been moved around. And it's weird because, like, one chair is in the middle of the room. And then, like, the uh, side table with the lamp on it is also, like, in the middle of the room. And so I'm like, well, this is weird. And, like, nothing's on the walls. And everything has just been moved to the middle of the room, but kind of set in random places. So I moved the end table with the lamp on it. Big fucking bald spot in the carpet. What the fuck? So I move all the furniture back to where it belonged. There's these bald patches missing from the carpet everywhere. Then I go in the bathroom and I find my fucking barber clippers and it's got fucking plastic and crack melted all over it. And uh, finally, fortunately, Smurf comes back because he had blue teeth. Um, Smurf's Smurf comes back, and I ask Smurf, like, he's trying to fucking farm some crack stuff? out of the carpet, and and of course, well, Woody, the Parmesan Hunter Biden style, yeah, Woody yeah. fucking sneeze, get that Parmesan. All that shit was in the fucking spoon, and it splashed all over the fucking carpet. But we seen where it landed, and didn't know that go to waste. I was like, bro, you all smoked the fucking carpet. Well, it really did get him high, I'm sure. No, I bet. It was, you know. It's mm. probably, you and know, the, carpet had been I mean, there since else. the 1970s, so. 
Probably had all Hen kinds of groovy Hen chemicals in it. Hence why they had multiple bald spots in the carpet. Because Damn. they smoked the first right. time and were like... Yeah. They f it's I like NASA. Better. They figured it out once, forgot about it, NASA and rediscovered it later. <laughs> well, the very yeah. next day, um, Woody says he, he... I was like, man, I don't really know about all this stuff. I just need to get some weed. He's like, oh, my dude's got some weed. Hop in. First time and last time I ever rode with James Woodrow Brady, a.k.a. Woody. Um, oh, my God. So we get in this fucking, um, what the fuck was that? One of these old, like, fucking muscle cars like he's talking about. It was the um, GT, a uh, Pontiac GTO, Ooh. 67 GTO. Like the kind where when you stomp on the gas and the four barrel goes, woo, woo, and the whole fucking thing pitches on the front suspension because it's, it's, it's flexing. It's flexing yeah. RPL. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So he takes me down the county fucking roads. And like, you know, it's not even blacktop. It's like the, the chip seal shit where they put the pea gravel and then spray it with tar. Yeah, man. So, you know, you're you're getting all that ass end action on every curve. And then here it, and then right there, about halfway across Ward's Branch County Road is the fucking hump where you go over the railroad track. I was waiting for it. This motherfucker's coming down the hill for the railroad tracks, at least at least doing 80. And it's like a 20, 25 mile an hour road. We met a tractor halfway down the road. He just went into the fucking field and got back on the road. <laughs> Jesus God. fucking Christ. You know, so we hit the fucking uh, railroad hump and Duke's a hazard it. But Yeehaw. when it came down, the front end was like, the front end like gouged and fucking sparks everywhere. We get there to the dude's house. Fucking press, Mexi, man. I like to fucking die riding with that crazy son of a bitch for some fucking Mexican brick weed, man. God damn it. I was so fucking mad. He, he got his out, track and I got fucking brick from fucking Mixlacan anyway. Was it the jackpot weed where you break it up and left thousand seeds? Well, this would have been the early 90s, right? Yeah, yeah. This is like 95. Yep, yeah. Yeah. That yeah. sounds about that, right. That's what the weed was back then around here. Some of it. Like, it. Some of and, it. And if, you, and, it, and if you got green Mexican brick weed, that shit was the fire back then. It right. was It was green Mexican brick weed, but it was so fucking dense. And so fucking hard, man. And, you know, just too dry. I mean, it got me high, but it tasted like absolute shit. But you couldn't even oh, yeah. use a grind. You couldn't even use a grinder back then because no. there were so many seeds in it. it would, yeah, yeah. And you just, to, no, you just get the, like, let's see. Crush it up and fucking get a notebook or a fucking cake pan or something, like a cookie. Pan yeah. And just fucking make the seeds all go down to one side, scoop them yeah. out. Yeah, I had one of those Joe Camel um, pool table ashtrays because I used to have yeah. all that Joe Camel shit. And I, I have one downstairs right line. now. And, uh, of course, you know, Joe Camel was one of the first um, uh, to be canceled because he was, you know, That's they right. said that he well, was Well, because he had a penis kids. nose. I had the Marlboro Mild duffel bag. Yeah, I still got my Marlboro duffel bag. I lost it, but it was tight. It was a good one. But I would use that Joe Camel um, <laughs> pool table ashtray because it, it has like a glass in the bottom of it, you know, and, and that was like the perfect thing for filtering out the seeds from shitty brick weed. Because it's got that big wall to catch them. Yeah. You know, yeah, because it's deep. Uh, if you remember what I'm talking about, the Joe Camel pool table ashtray. I could um, run and grab one right now. Yeah, it looks like a pool table, but it's an ashtray yeah. with a glass bottom and about about yay tall yeah, on the big side. Dick of it. nose is on it. He's got a pool yeah. stick. Yep, yep. The one, the one, the one my buddy had wasn't even fucking glass. It was plastic, and every time people would leave a cigarette in it, it would burn it, and there would be like burn spots all over the shitty camera ashtray. Mine was the real deal. I had to order that shit from the mail. 
that's how you get a good that's how you get a good buzz a couple beers leave your cigarette burning in the plastic for a minute and then take a good fucking couple hot box oh, yeah. drags hell yeah get some of that poly bottle chloride action going on <laughs> back when shit was pure Man, I cannot believe all that Luciferian statute fucking shit that they threw up at the Ashland Riverfront Park. Now that we all have freaking microplastic in our balls, that shit don't even get you high anymore. This is like fucking tolerance build up. Right. Yeah, now you just got to get the like the uh, furniture cleaner or the fucking carpet cleaner <laughs> and spray it into a rag and fucking huff on that shit. They're slow marching us to bleach. <laughs> you realize that? I know. Oh, by the way, Drizzle, you, you may remember last night when I was reading ex- excerpts from our local newspaper here, yeah, the uh, the Huntington Herald Dispatch, as well as the Charlton Gazette. Crazy Charlton shit going Gazette. on in Huntington. And uh, the one of the biggest stories was about some stupid fucking hot dog trail that they right. started in Huntington with like nine restaurants. Well, today. I decided to do a bit of research on the ground about this fucking hot dog trail that's been going for a year that I hadn't heard about because apparently everyone's wanted to come to the state of West Virginia just to do the Huntington hot dog trail. Thousands, according to the newspaper. Well, first two I went to... Sounds popular. We're both selling a Huntington brand chili dog with cinnamon and spaghetti on it. Okay. I just talked about that shit the other night. That's Cincinnati fucking chili. That's what those motherfuckers in Cincinnati do. They put nutmeg put cinnamon, cinnamon in it. All these weird fucking things. And then dump about maybe 12 ounces of cooked fat fucking spaghetti. Not vermicelli. Big fucking, big fucking fat spaghetti. Dude. We're like, and it's just watery and drippy wet fucking like like your- elementary school lunch spaghetti yeah. noodles have been there all day. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. like fucking school lunch fucking chili. Yeah, got the runny just- little tomato tomato juice on them. Yeah, yeah. I'd rather take the Tennessee tube steak tour. Oh, oh shit! That just doesn't picked, sound uh, like fun. I just picked six cayenne peppers out of my garden and some bell peppers. I'm gonna be Spinning up some chili with that shit. What kind of food un- is New Jersey known for? The what cheese type steak? of food? Or is that a Philadelphia thing? Oh, it's it. It's all all depends where you're at. There's uh, an endless supply of cheese steaks at every place and pizza places. They have like a lot of Greek gyros, South or Jersey gyros, or whatever in Jersey is out. They got gyros uh, in Jersey. I don't know. They've got all. They've got everything around here. Yeah, they got kebab. Best rolls in the country. That's what makes what about a sandwich. Biscuits and gravy. Y'all got a good like uh, uh nah, that's south. Type place? That's, that's south that's south of here. Biscuits. Mm. We don't fuck with biscuits around here. Y'all don't do breakfast? No, they do rolls. Rolls, man. Rolls. Roll. Yeah. Roll. Rolls and donuts. Well see, like all over West Virginia, we have this specific um chain of restaurants. It's only open from like 6 a.m. to most of them are only open till about two o'clock in the afternoon and they close. Right. That would be Tudor's Biscuit World. And um, RBL knows what I'm talking about. And all I, the I biscuits. Worked... Uh-huh. Yeah, I worked right next door to one. I, I ran a bar next door to a Tudor's Biscuit World. Yeah. Um, all their biscuits have names, right? So, like the bologna biscuit, that's the politician, of course, because it's bologna. Um, you know, the Ron, the Mary B, the Herd. Um, and uh, the biscuits are really big. It, it, if you're into biscuits, Tudors is the place. If you're not into biscuits, um, see yeah, if you ever eat a biscuit and you're like, this is too much fucking biscuit. I yeah. Need like a gallon of water now. Yeah. Yeah. The biscuits are trouble. fucking ginormous. As Trump would say, they're huge. Right. Do they do croissants? No. Mm. No, it, Tudor's is a West Virginia type restaurant. 
They wouldn't call them croissants there anyways. If they had croissants, they call them crescent roll. Yeah, Just or like cr- they, sandwich, they, you know, because they, 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 they have some um, tortillas. Cr- croissant. Yeah. But they don't call them tortillas. Uh, uh, bub, those are, you, you want one of those wraps there? It's a buddy? wrap. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Wrap it up, B. Chicken wrap, sausage wrap. Is, is Hooters even in business anymore? I think so. No, Tudors. Tudors. Now, now, Hooters. Hooters is still Hooters, in business. Uh, They're still around. And they're still wearing the uh, the flimsy, skimpy uniform. Well, the, the although Hooters most of the girls wear tights West now. Virginia, uh, unironically, they turned the old Hooters into a Dairy Queen. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> which makes perfect sense if you think about it. Yeah. I mean, if you, you if, once if were you, a young Hooters girl, now you're a big. Old Dairy Queen. That's right. Mm-hmm. If you, that's right. If you, she pucked out, buddy. <laughs> he wanted a cherry on top. You, you got a better chance of going to a strip club with a buffet and getting better food than going to a Hooters. So, I mean, take your chances mm-hmm. out there. Uh, the Hooters, the in Fairfax Hooters for the was food. Decent. You know, you know what Hooters is to me. Uh, mom's, less than, less mom's than cafeteria grade food. To try to be cool, you know. Yeah. Like I don't know. You know like, I, I had a, when, I had a boss like twenty your, years. Uh, go to meet your mom's new fiance, boyfriend, husband, guy. I do. He, he wants to be cool, so he lets you drink a beer. You're like, you ever had a Heineken? I, I worked cool. for a dude cool. like twenty you years ago. Here's some money. Go to the arcade. Oh, you're cool. But when you would have to go to like his home office, he would take you to Hooters for lunch, and it was like. Like the saddest like experience ever. There would be like <laughs> dudes with their like wife and kids in there. Like the like if if you're going in there for anything other than look at tits and ass, then I I got bad news for you, man. The food sucks. It's always sucked. Their gimmick, <laughs> their gimmick of like tits and ass. I mean, I I would think in this modern age, <laughs> it, would like it would be canceled. You know, there there is yeah. worse than Hooters though. You could go to a TGI Fridays and get the bad food and no tits and ass. Well, there you go. Ruby Tuesdays is even. It's worse. all about priorities. You're, you're better off wearing a bag on your head going in Ruby Tuesday. Fuck that. You're better and off. Red Lobster. Taking... Why would you go to Red Lobster? You're gonna pay eighty dollars for some rubbery fucking calamari that they just fucking microwave that's been frozen for three weeks in the deep freeze. Seriously, bro. <laughs> They don't cook anything at Red Lobster anymore. It's all microwave food. Fuck you, garden sh- restaurants. I'm pretty sure Father if you're going eating that. I heard shit. that. I heard restaurants were microwaving shit now. Yeah. The yeah same thing with OG or uh, Olive Garden. Same thing with Olive now, Garden. I, I worked in restaurants like 27 years ago, and yeah, we fucking microwave shit. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't microwave anything at Wendy's, by God. We had standards. Four quarter press, home. Dave Thomas. Quality is our recipe. I earned the no. right to become a fry engineer after that. No, I was talking about like a sit down franchise <laughs> restaurant that's no longer in business. <laughs> oh, like a Bennigan's in in Borger, Texas. Ground Fuck round. You, bugger. you guys remember the old ground round? Oh hell yeah, yeah man! Fucking Bro. love ground round. <laughs> that yeah, was the shit back in the few. day. I worked there for a few years in the kitchens. Round, round. I'll tell you another one I always liked was um, Western Sizzlin. Or Sizzler. Sizzler Steakhouse. We had out. a Western Sizzlin in Morgantown. And um, Golden Corral. There ain't uh, many of Golden those. Corral, bam. Golden Corral. There's still a Golden fuck. Corral in uh, Winchester. Like gristly and chewy, you know. But right off of US 50. I mean, you know what I'm saying? If you ever wanted to eat, like, um, if you ever wanted to eat food poisoning, just go to a Chinese buffet and keep rolling the dice until it happens for you. Bam. Oh, now, now the Chinese buffet, dude. I'm I've seen Chinese. fucking bugs. Like, like, what, what was it? Because you know, it's, it, they've got all the things. I'm trying to think what it was in. It was the. Um, uh, there was right, pork well, fried rice, there, man. Yana. There was a fried fucking bug yeah. in it. Like I guess it had fallen down when they were 
you know, flipping the, doing the walk thing, you know, move, you know, pushing their walk around, making the fucking rice fly up in the air. And then yeah, there's like fucking fire <laughs> splashing the ceiling, roaches falling off in there. Blah, blah, blah. Good Lord. Oh, ah, that sounds terrible. First time my old lady got Chinese food when she come down to Ecuador. Cause I, I got a job down in Ecuador and moved down to Ecuador. And then, uh, she finished up, uh, affairs in Kentucky and come down to join me in Ecuador and, uh, I don't know, after a day or two there, after she got over the uh, jet oh, lag, got acclimated to the altitude. Oh, where'd it go? Um, but that is the perfect time uh, to say goodnight, everybody, because it's oh. uh, it's about time for us to go off. There the he air. is. Yeah, anyway, uh, she had a roach and a rice. Yeah. yeah. And, and almost ate it. All right. Anyway. We will be back on the air next Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern. Do not fret, though. You've got Saturday night anarchy tomorrow night. You've got mob rules on Sunday. The Peasants podcast on Monday. Yes, Hiona. Bam. And right back here Tuesday night to play more of your requests than any damn body else. Only on your Liberty Radio. Please remember us at manufacturingreality.org forward slash provide hyphen value. And have a good weekend. We'll see you next week.